Hello. How are you doing? Uh, hope you're having a wonderful morning or evening, wherever you are in the world. This hopefully reaches out. <laughs> Who am I kidding? <laughs> nobody's nobody's watching my videos. I'm getting no likes. I'm getting no comments. I am restricted to the point where I might as well not even have a channel. Isn't that wonderful? They say, hey, come on to YouTube, start your channel. But just so you know, if you say anything we don't like, you might as well just not even start. Hmm. I know my last two videos were kind of heavy, but there's a lot of adult stuff going on, right? And, you know, those have to be brought up, they have to be addressed. This morning, we're going to have a little fun. I want to talk about toxic, not toxic relationships that you have in your life, which I've had to cut out pretty much everybody I know. The one person I haven't cut out in my life is my big sister, Deanna. My partner in crime <laughs> in a lot of ways. Actually, I was her partner in crime when we were kids. She was like, it's hard to explain my family dynamic. My mother was married five times, maybe six now, I don't remember. You lose track, right? I have seven brothers and sisters. Well, I'm the six other brothers and sisters. I have an older brother, Tom, who was she had when she was a teenager and had to give up for adoption. And I met him finally. That was an interesting situation. Because the weird part was we, somebody heard, heard that he died in a car wreck, right? And I was just, and it hurt my heart because I was like, I never was going to get to meet the guy, right? And, and like, not even eight months out, I mean, I was really deep into it. I was really hurt. It was hurt because I was just really focused. Like, I wanted to see him. I wanted to meet him. And less than eight months later, my mom calls everybody. was like freaking out because he caught a hold of her. So I got to meet him. That was kind of interesting. And then my other brother, Willie, who I've met a couple times, who didn't even acknowledge that he was my brother. Yeah, that was I've never actually, yeah, he's never been in my life at all. And then my brother Christopher, who's who's going through his dark night of the soul, and I don't know if he's ever going to get out of that one, but you get it. You, like I tell people, whatever you put out into the world, you're going to get back. So you be careful what you do and how you treat people. And then there's my sister Shalene, Shelly. Uh, another judgmental individual. I love my sister. I do. And she was part of my, she was a protector when I was a kid. She took, she took care of me. She was like the surrogate mother. But she becomes very judgmental in her religion and her beliefs and very toxic as far as I'm concerned. So I had to cut her off. And then there's my sister, Deanna. And there's also my sis, little sister, Jennifer, who was born 11 years after I was born. So that was interesting. And yeah, she's a whole different trip, but I love her too. And then there's my sister, Deanna, who actually, we are the only two in the family that share the same father. My mother married my father and then had my sister Deanna and then two years later I showed up and that was interesting when I was five they divorced and I went to my mother's because my dad whooped ass he did he was an ass whooper and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute but yeah and so I went with my mom and my sister Deanna went with my father and that hurt her in a lot of ways because of his relationships with my stepmom really messed my sister up because that lady got into my dad's life by using my sister Deanna, by spoiling her and just shopping with her and making her feel like her best friend. And then when she got my dad, just totally flipped on my sister and treated her like shit. So my sister was just really fucked up over that one. She didn't, she's like, what the hell happened? Anyway, when I talk about ass whoopings with my father, this is my, my partner in crime, or I was hers. You know, I was two years younger than my sister, right? She was like, had to have been like five, and I was like two. You know, whatever, age difference. And the first experience was she had uh, some matches. My sister found some matches and we we're on the side of the house. And she was lighting the grass on fire. And she heard the back door open up. And she was smart enough to hand me the matches. And I was dumb enough to take them. <laughs> and as soon as she handed me the matches, my father comes around the corner and sees this grass on fire and sees me holding the matches. And did I get an ass whooping on that one, right? Little kid, but hey, my father did not mess around. He was very strict. And my, my grandmother, his mother, was the, was the disciplinarian in their family. So can you imagine, she, she whooped ass. She had to switch. 
That was interesting. I experienced that as a kid too. I love my grandmother. She was she was a rock. She was the one. She would literally every year she would she would mail off a dollar to each of her grandchildren. She was poor. She was living off of you know whatever. But that was one thing. And she wrote a little hand wrote and it was all scribbly. It was so cute. She was so sweet. Anyway, so that was the first one of the experiences as you know with me and my sister Deanna. And then another time she decided. We're going to go streaking down the street. So she stripped down naked and then stripped me down naked. And then we started running down the street. And I don't know why, but I followed. I was like, yeah, just, you know, dangling, you know. And here's my dad chasing after us with his boots on. He's fast with boots. I was surprised. I mean, from there, you know, it goes on. We've always been, you know, I love my sister. She's, we had this, we have a bond. <clears throat> and... She's like one of the only people that I know can read me like that. I walk into a room and she'll know if I'm happy or sad. She'll go, what's wrong? Uh, and it sucks because she's like the one person that can get me to break down if I'm really, really hurt. She'll be like, what's wrong? I'm like, shit. You know, it's like that kind of thing. You're like, oh, I don't want to feel emotions right now. I'm already heavy in it. And she, yeah, she gets me crying and shit. It sucks. But, yeah. but that's, you know, she cares. She ca actually one of the few people that actually gives a shit about me. Honestly, and with the unconditionally, she might, you know, tell me to go kick, kick at, kiss ass, or whatever. And she has whooped my ass before, you know, two years older than me. And and I gotta tell you something, my sister Shelly, as well, both of my sisters were just brutal as children. They were they would fight like dudes. They were they were Amazon women, very tall for women, and very aggressive. <laughs> very very aggressive. As a matter of fact, when I first went to Real Linda High School. I got kicked out of Encino High School for smoking weed. They didn't catch me smoking weed. I just looked really high. So they sent me to the office and expelled me right there. Didn't even, I probably could tell, I, th I probably told them to go fuck themselves anyway, but yeah. So I had to get, I got transferred to Rio Linda where my sister Deanne had gone the previous year. And she had, she left that place legendary apparently. When I showed up, they're like, oh, you're Deanna's little brother. You're cool, right? They were like really cool to me for some reason. I was like, okay. And somebody told me about why. Like, they were in awe of my sister. One day she was in the lunch line, and a really big jock thought he was going to be cute and grabbed her ass. Big mistake. And I will quote the guy that witnessed the ass whooping. He said, she beat him like a dude. It was, they were in awe. She literally beat his ass. How embarrassing would that be for a football player to get your ass beat by a woman in front of everybody? The cafeteria was full. And she beat the shit out of this dude. He disrespected her. Yeah, I've experienced that ass whooping. <laughs> well, a great example, when, I had, when my mom, of course, couldn't handle me anymore, she threw me to my dad, playing tennis with me. That was fun. And... <laughs> me and my sister got into a fight over who was going to have to eat the heel of the bread. I should have just ate the fucking heel. Because I got... Yeah. Besides the bread being torn apart. And she had me backed into the corner. She got a knife. She was, she was chasing after me with the knife. It was a sharp knife. I had a house plant I stuck in front of me. And she chopped that fucking thing up. And then she realized at that point that she was gonna kill me with this knife. So she put the knife down and she continued to whoop my ass. And the funniest part of that ass whooping was we were in the living room. And she was on top of me on the couch, just plummeting me, right? And I had my I was facing the doorway into the kitchen. And she had her back to the doorway. And my <laughs> my father came in. <laughs> Neither of us heard him come inside the house. I was too busy to get my ass whooped. Hey, she, trust me, my sister's badass. So, my dad comes around the corner and walks into the living room and just sees my sister kicking my ass, right? And and I, she sees the look on my face. She didn't look around. She just saw the look on my face, and she instantly knew who was there. And it's like mid punch, she turned around, and then my dad was there going, "Yes, we both got an ass whooping on that one." But this is my sister, right? Through my whole life, she was the one person I could always depend on. I could always call when I was feeling bad. 
She let me stay with her for a while when I was younger, when I was couch surfing in my twenties. And her husband didn't like that at all. But she didn't give a shit. She's like, that's my little brother, deal with it. And I was trying not to cause problems for them, but you know, she uh, my sister loved me and she does love me and I appreciate her to this day. She's the one person I won't cut off. And we can argue and fight and all that shit, but no, I love my sister and she loves me and that's cool. That's, that's rare. Trust me, a lot, of, a lot of families aren't, a lot of dysfunctional families in the world. And mine was uber, Greek tragedy, you know, sad. A lot of it is. You know, you got two people that just, you know, my mother, I mean, come on now. She was Catholic. My, her family was Catholic. My grandparents and all that. So they didn't believe in abortion. And I appreciate that because I'm here and I love my life. And that's one thing about my mother. We've always had a, a, a relationship. with. I've always been able to talk to my mother. Because as an adult, I told her straight up, do not fucking bullshit me or we won't, I won't call you no more. We won't talk. So I called her on her shit and she, and she respected that and we have a relationship. And I also, I always tell her whenever she tries to apologize for the past, I said, look, I love you. I thank you for having me. If nothing else. You could have said no. I was the sixth kid. Can you imagine having a sixth kid? Most women would be like, you're lucky you get two out of me, fool. She's seven. Like I said, you know, she wasn't perfect, but she wasn't, you know, she wasn't that bad either. She she had a love for life, and I appreciate that. My sister Deanna, man, I'll tell you what. <laughs> to this day, she still kicks ass. She's badass. She's about 53. Uh, yeah, that's all. I just wanted to bring up uh, something positive, something funny. The ass weapons I took. There was another incident where I got into it with my sister and my sister Shelly. That was a big mistake. Oh, there's a, well, I'll go back to a, another one too, because we, we all had to babysit my little sister when Deanna was living with us, when she came over and hung out with my mom. And she was hanging out with her friend Dina, and it was her turn to, to babysit. But they were already drinking tequila. We were teenagers. And she was getting drunk already. She was planning on going out and partying. I'm like, uh, no. Um, it's my, your turn to watch her. I'm going and hanging out with Thomas. Um, Thomas, my butt, my best friend since high school, was with me. And we were on our bikes. And we are riding away from the house. Here comes my sister Deanna chasing after me. Grabs me off my bike and starts whooping my ass. And I'm just like, what are you doing? I'm like, get away from me, right? <laughs> what does my sister do? She kicks me in the balls. That ended the fight for me. I was like, oh. And then some dude comes out of his house. Because we were like fighting on his lawn. I wasn't fighting. I was getting my ass whooped. Well, I wasn't like fighting my sister. I was just trying to get away from her. And she kicked me in the balls. And that was terrible. But this guy comes out of his house. Ready to kick my ass. For fighting a girl. I wasn't fighting nobody. I was trying to, I was trying to avoid that. My sister jumped on his shit hard. She said, don't you touch my little brother. <laughs> she was, he was like, whoa. He turned around and went right back in his house. But yeah. She was protective. But she whooped my ass, right? And that was another funny story. I was watching He-Man. This was like 16. And I was watching He-Man. Cartoons. And apparently Days of Our Lives was coming on. And here comes my sister. Both my sisters in the room. T click. Turn the ch I was like, what are you doing, man? I was watching something. They don't care. I'm like, click. I clicked it back. Biggest mistake. I don't know if they were synced up or whatever. But instantly, I was in the kitchen with the broom, <laughs> just trying to keep them at. My sister Deanna was hitting me with the broom. My sister Shelly punched me straight in the face. I was just like, whoa, I'm in the kitchen. And you could hear the, 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 the fight from next door. And we had a big burly biker that lived next door. He comes over and into the house because he didn't know what was going on. He just heard all this fucking screaming and yelling. So he was going to come over and he saw, you know, them fighting me. And he, he started wanting to kick my ass. And my sister jumped on it, instantly turned on me and went to him and said, dude, don't you, you know, just like, rah. He was like, whoa, that dude, he's a big biker, right? He was like, gone. I'm out. I was like, take me with you. I was like, I was like please don't leave me. Yeah, my sisters are badass. I mean, I'm no pussy, but at the same time, I don't hit girls. That was another disadvantage. I was like very leery of hitting anybody. And, my, and yeah, our fights were legendary, like rolling over the furniture beat the crap out of each other and mostly getting my ass whooped like i said i was a younger one and my sisters were fucking amazons 
I've always had respect for women. I was raised by my sisters. I tell people I was raised by a pack of wild women. And they were Amazon. They were ass kickers. Any day of the week. And I had nothing but respect for my sisters. And I would never disrespect them, and I didn't talk shit to them or any of that. It's just if they didn't like what's going on, they'd whoop ass and not even think twice. Like a dude. But anyway, that's all. That's my story for today. That's my video. Just a little paying homage to my sister Deanna, who I love dearly. And I appreciate that. That, And then that, that's another interesting thing about myself is I don't know what I would have been without my sisters because my mother was absent. So I didn't really have that female mother figure. And that would have probably been way out worse for me if I hadn't had anybody there to give me some kind of comfort and, and care about me, right, at some level. Make sure I was washed up and, you know, taking baths and whatever, eating and stuff like that. So I appreciate that. That was a good thing. Anyway, I love you. God loves you and the universe loves you. And I want you to have a wonderful day. And don't cut everybody out of your life. If you know somebody's been there and they've always been loyal and loving to you, keep that connection. It's important. Anyway, have a wonderful day.